Today we're going to look at rendering a wireframe inside of Houdini and then taking that wireframe and inside of Houdini compositing it with a beauty pass render to kind of overlay the wireframe on your beauty pass. And then we're also going to take a look at doing a quick uh, wipe animation so that we can uh, show the wireframe and then take it off and then you get kind of a more interesting dynamic look of that process. So let's take a look. So I have a scene here and it just has a sphere and a ground plane that we're going to be rendering. Uh, one of the first things that we want to do is set up a camera. So with the camera, I'm going to create a new camera here. And it basically creates it based off of the positioning of the camera that we have there. So if we rotate, you can see it says no cam now. Um, the camera is there, but if we go back and select cam one, we can be rendering here. And then what I want to start looking at is how we're going to be rendering this. So let's go to the out mode. And in here, I'm going to create a mantra node. And this will be where we're rendering to. Um, I'm just going to keep out the default settings because that's all I need for now. And I'm going to go back to object mode so that we can render the wireframe and then I'll render the full color version of this as well. And I'll do only stills on this video, but the same process for video as well. So I got this here. Um, so let's look at the different ways that we're going to view the wireframe. So um, if we click on this box here, you'll see that we get this menu. We have wireframe bounding box, and that makes a bounding box basically a box that surrounds the whole object that you have in the scene and makes a wireframe around it. That's not pretty practical for what we want to do. So we can look at... Um, the shaded bounding box and that is also not what we want to do because it's not giving us our shapes so then we can look at wireframe here this starts looking a little bit better but we have an issue where we kind of have information overload where we have too um, many lines going through and it's hard to read what's actually going on so I can go in and change it to wireframe ghost. This is a little bit better where it's ghosting the background. Um, and we can see this a little bit clearer. Uh, but my favorite way to do it is hidden line invisible. So that way anything that is on the back, you can't see the wireframe of that object. So that's how I'm going to render my wireframe. In order to render the wireframe, what I'm going to do is go to the flipbook settings here. And with the flipbook settings, I'm going to right click on it and it says flipbook with new settings. That's great. And we can start looking at how we're going to adjust everything. So right now I am just going to be rendering the first frame, a single frame. So I'm just going to say start at frame one and at frame one and we're going by one frame. Um, output, I'm just going to save this on the desktop for now. And this is going to be my wire frame. And I want to make sure that I save this with something that um, accepts a alpha channel. So I'm going to save it as a PNG. Accept. Um, visible objects, so right now it just says everything. Um, that's fine. We're going to render everything. And let's look at the what we get now with the render. So if we go to accept and I open the file here, we're getting this um, for our effect and it is okay. Um, 
we have the alpha channel working in and everything but um we're seeing the grid we're seeing these display items um from the window and a lot of extra information that i actually don't want so in order to clean that up i'm gonna go back to the settings and i'm going to tell it to render a beauty pass only so when i do that you'll see that with the image here we lose all that other stuff um that we didn't need it looks completely black now because we're just on a black background with black wireframe so that makes sense um so we're not going to see anything else from there um let's select the camera really quick so we can look at the camera settings so right now if we look at the view we're rendering at 720 we can choose um if i take this and make it a little bit smaller so that you can see um, here the different um, resolutions. So let's just say that I'm rendering at HDTV 1080. So I'll set that as our settings. So 1920 by 1080. Let's go back to our settings here. Go back to the flipbook settings and go to size really quick and this is where we can start adjusting that so here at the resolution we can make it match so that way we have the same resolution um if we were to render this um well, we can't see this here but um with the settings that we have set right now we are getting kind of close for the size that we want but it's basically rendering everything in the viewport and it's i don't have much of a mask here but you can see a little bit of the mask there um if we want to make it actually match up with the camera and render that resolution there you have to make it uh crop um crop out view mask overlay so that way it only renders out what the camera can actually see if you don't do that then it won't line up with your image um, effects, um, you can play around with the effects here if you want. Um, I'm not going to, I don't need anything on here uh, for motion blur or depth, but um, it might be a good idea with the wireframe to increase the anti-aliasing quality so that way we can have nice crisp edges for our wireframe. Uh, the gamma, that's fine. They'll automatically fix it for us. So that's the settings that I want. When it's, I click accept, it will render. Um, at this point, now that we have those settings, anytime I click on the button doing a normal um, left button mouse click, it will render out the image for us. So that's great. So that's the wireframe image. Now let's go in to our... Um, Mantra node, and I am going to say, cool, we're rendering from camera one. Um, we need lights, so I'm going to go back and let's just create a simple environment light. And just give it some sort of kind of tint. There we go, and I'm gonna tell it to render light geometry. So I have a camera, I have a light, and now I can go back to the mantra node. Here in the mantra node, and I'm just going to do a quick render to and play. And when that opens up, and it's off on my other monitor, so here it is. Eh, I'm going to stop that. I don't want the color right now for this scene. Let's just go back in and desaturate it completely. Here. And I got white and then I can kind of just give it a mid-tone color so that it's not completely white when it's rendering. 
So let's go back to our mantra node one more time. Not material, but mantra node and our out panel here. Um, so I'm going to click render to play again. It should pop up in a moment. It's going to pop up soon. Oh, it was just rendering in the background. Perfect. So this is getting us our beauty pass for our, our image, which is going to be basically like what our render looks like. And then we're going to composite them together um, in Houdini to get the wireframe. And I'm actually zoomed in a bit. So we had some of it being cropped off. So now we can see the whole thing. Uh, when this renders it all the way out, I will save it. Should be in a couple of seconds. It's getting close. Here we go. So I'm going to do save frame and I'm just going to go back to the desktop again for this one. This is going to be, um, I'm going to save this one as a JPEG. So beauty.jpg on quality at 100. That's fine. Color, everything else I'm going to keep at our settings. Um, it's been saved out. So if I were to open this file, we can see here we have the file that we need to work on. So let's go in and start compositing our image. So um, I am going to bring in a uh, give me one second image network. And then in here, I can uh, bring in a file node. And the file node is what we're going to use to read our two files that we have here. And let's look at the uh, composite view. Composite view is how we see our final output. And right here, um, the default image is a butterfly, which obviously we don't want. Uh, we want the beauty for one image. There we go. So we have the beauty image and then we need another file node. And in this file node, I am going to be bringing in the wireframe. So we can do an a top. And if we do an a top here, basically let's look at the inputs here. So this is the foreground and then this is the background. So the background in this case, we want to plug in here and the foreground, we want to plug into our wireframe. So let's look at this here. And there is our wireframe, which looks pretty nice. And um, we can do effects. So that's basically how we get it in there um, right now. Also, the weight is one and one, so we can actually fade them in and out if we wanted to here. Um, if you wanted to do that kind of effect for your scene. Um, but let's say you wanted to do a wipe, you can actually bring in a wipe node. And this will wipe back and forth from two different images. So we can plug in one into this um, one that is already connected. Actually, I'm going to connect it into, uh, let's do, cut that and connect it there and just that way. So the wires aren't um, crossed here. We can fade this in and out. And then if we wanted to do this as a wipe, we just change the operation. So let's say we wanted to do a vertical wipe. 
So as we wipe this, it will wipe it on and off between the two images that we have coming into this. Um, and we have this line width. So if we look at it here, we can adjust the line line width to make it wider or less. Um, if we put it all the way down to zero, obviously we won't have a line. We could change the color and things like that if we wanted to. But in this case, I don't want the line connected at all. Um, so I'm not going to put the line on there. And then I want to also be able to um, animate this. So I'm going to start off with it all the way off at zero. And let's say I go in and set a keyframe here. I can do that by alt clicking on the mount. And I'm going to say that it takes one second to activate. And I'll set a keyframe there. And it will hold for one second. And I will take it and turn it back off. So with this simple animation, if we go back to the beginning and play it through, you can see that we get a wipe working for us. So here it goes. You got the wipe coming on, coming back off. And you have a simple render of a wireframe that is now composited coming on and off. And that's how you render and composite a wireframe inside of Houdini. If you've built any projects based off this, I'd love to see it. Please share it with me on my Twitter account. And if you found this tutorial useful, please like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next lesson. Have a good one.